All right, guys, let's take a look at our packet for today. So all you have to do is go to the page that says Tuesday. Remember, we're working out of the packet that says week five instead of week four, because this is the one that has um, only four days worth of work. The other one has five days and you guys aren't doing any work on Friday. So um, let's go ahead and take a look. We're doing the same thing as yesterday now, um, but let's read our directions anyways. We have text one, text two, compare similar stories. When you compare two fiction texts, Pay attention to the character setting and plot. What do the stories have in common? What is different about the stories? Directions. Read the text below and answer the questions that follow. So notice for this one, we're not going to, um, we're not making a Venn diagram to compare. We're just thinking about what we read and we have some questions down here that we'll be answering. Okay, so and these questions are specifically about the two texts. So let's take a look at the questions before we get started reading. Number one, how is Elias's, oh, sorry, how is Elias different from Anita? This is another thing we talked about yesterday about how I skipped a word. I was about to add in a word here. <laughs> if we add in a word, we could change the whole, um, the whole sentence and then be asking a different question, right? I think I was kind of reading down here because I was about to say, how is Elias's problem different from Anita? And that's not what this is asking. So there's another example of why you want to make sure that you're reading um, accurately. Even if it's just one or two words that you're adding in or removing, go back to it and read it again and try to make sure you're reading just what's on the page and not leaving stuff out or adding stuff in. What, what time is it? It's 6.33 right now, so still a little tired. Okay, <laughs> number one, how is Elias different from Anita? Number two, how is Elias's problem similar to Anita's problem? Number three, part A, what lesson does Anita learn in text two? So this is a cool question because it tells you exactly which text to look at. Part B, how is this the same as the lesson Elias learned in text one? So now you don't know to go back here. You can use the headings to figure that out. Number four, how are the settings in text one and text two the same? So we're looking for similarities and differences about the characters, setting, and the plot. Okay, make sure you read these on your own before you listen to me read them, but we've read some of the questions and hopefully we have an idea of what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and start reading. Elias was assigned a big project in his social studies class. He did not want to complete it. He knew it was a lot of work. He thought the project would be boring. Elias had two weeks until the due date. Elias could have gone home and started the project. Instead, he put it off. I'm just gonna put a little note here. He went skateboarding with his friends at the park and he played video games with his brother. When his mom suggested he clean his room, Elias happily cleaned. He chose to do anything other than the project. Elias suddenly panicked as he remembered the due date. The project was due tomorrow. He hadn't even started. He was too afraid to tell his mom. She would not be happy about this. Immediately, Elias wished that he had been more responsible. Right here where it says, Elias, uh, he could, he thought the project would be boring, so he had two weeks to do it. He could have gone home and started the project, but instead he put off the project. I think we've mentioned this word once or twice. Does anyone remember what it means if you have something to do and you just keep putting it off instead of doing it? It starts with a P. Starts with the prefix pro. The word is procrastinate and procrastinate means that you have something to do, but you don't want to do it. So you just keep putting it off. And that is how we can describe what Elias is doing here. Uh, there was one more thing. I want you to take a look here. Just what do you see here between the words date and then the project? And then also take a look here where we have the words project, Elias, and suddenly. Do you know, notice any difference? Do you notice an error here? Hopefully you notice there's an error here. You have a period, you're supposed to have a space after when you type. And here there's a period and there's no space. So this right here is a mistake. They forgot to put a space after that period. 
So don't forget that when you're typing something that you have to do that. Um, if you want, you can practice typing on Brainsy. Remember, it'll ask you if you have another, um, some kind of typing device connected. You just say yes, and then um, it'll your keyboard will pop up on the iPad. You could also do it on a desktop computer as well if you have one or a laptop. All right, let's read text two. Text two. Anita and the alarm clock were not friends. Each morning, she groaned as the alarm clock buzzed. Her morning routine included hitting the snooze button four or five times. Then her dad would come in and announce that she was running out of time and she needed to get up immediately. It was the same thing every day. If you don't get moving right now, you're going to miss the bus, dad stated. Then I'm going to have to drive you to school. I'll miss my morning meeting at work. The stern look on his face told Anita that he was not playing around. Anita dragged herself out of bed and went through the motions of getting ready for school. As she grabbed her breakfast and backpack, she heard the roar of the school bus as it passed her house. She had officially missed the bus. Yikes, I bet her dad is not happy with her. Do you notice any similarities um, between these two texts so far? Between what Anita's doing and what Elias is doing? Hopefully you notice they're both procrastinating, right? The only difference is uh, what? What is the difference between their procrastination? He's procrastinating doing his work and Anita's procrastinating getting out of bed. But essentially it's the same thing. They're putting something off that they don't wanna do. And we've talked about this before. Sometimes when we've watched um, like episodes of Arthur, there've been um, certain episodes where things like this have happened, right? When you put something off instead of just doing it, sometimes you're just making more trouble for yourself, right? Because a lot of times these little things that we put off are really just little. I think I've shared with you guys before that I hate washing the dishes and I'll put it off and then more and more dishes are there. And then I'm just thinking about it and I'm so upset that I have to wash all these dishes. And then I do the dishes and I'm like, well, that took me only five minutes. Why did I spend so much time being upset? when I could have just washed these dishes in five minutes and had it be done, right? Same thing with these guys. If you just get up, start moving, you'll feel better. If you just do the project, then you don't have to worry about it anymore. So that's um, something not only that we can talk about for these two stories, but this is just a life lesson as well. There are little things that we don't like to do, but when we realize how small those things are, especially in comparison for us as Catholics and Christians to things that Jesus had to do, right? Being nailed on a cross. That's something that, you know, I would want to put off <laughs> if that were going to happen to me, but it's something so big and just so nice for all of us. And for us, we're doing little things like putting off doing our homework or the dishes. And it's like, why don't we just do it? You know, it's so small compared to the things that Jesus has done for us. All right, sorry about the side note, but we always want to relate everything that we're learning to the stuff that we already know. That way it will stick in our mind. So let's take a look at question one. How is Elias different from Anita? We just talked about some similarities, but what's different about these things? Hmm... Can you think of anything? If you're not sure, go back and look in the text. We kind of talked about what it was. So we could say he is putting off doing his big project and she is not getting up when her alarm clock goes up. It really doesn't list any character traits other than the fact that it says he wishes he were more responsible, which means he's not very responsible, right? He's not doing the work he's supposed to do. But that's kind of the same as Anita, isn't it? She's also not very responsible if she's not getting up on time to go to school. So I would say if you're asking about the differences, I would talk about the problem. So maybe I could say... He doesn't want to do his project. And Anita doesn't like waking up. 
How about number two? How is Elias's problem similar to Anita's problem? Hmm, there's a word here that you might use in your answer. You don't have to use that word though. If you're still like, I don't really get what procrastinate means, then don't use it. You can just say, uh, you know, that they're both putting things off because that's another way to, same thing, to say the same thing. How about for number three? What lesson does Anita learn in text two? What do you think she learns? And if you're not sure, think about a short summary of what we read about her. If you still, if you can't come up with a short summary, remember if you can't come up with the plot, the main events of what happened, reread it and then come back. What do you think she learned in this text? If, and I'm going to say my summary. So if you're going to think about yours, pause the tape or <laughs> the tape, pause the video here. Um, so she doesn't like getting up. Every day, she hits the snooze button a bunch of times. Every day, her dad has to tell her that she needs to get up or she's going to be late. And she finally gets up and tries to get ready for school, and she misses the bus. So what lesson do you think she learned? Hopefully, she learned that she needs to get up the first time, that she needs to get up so she can be on time for school. How about, how is this the same as the lesson Elias learned in text one? What do you think he learned at the end? Let's just read what it says. The project was due tomorrow. He hadn't even started. He was too afraid to tell his mom. She would not be happy about this. Immediately, Elias wished that he had been more responsible. So how is her problem similar to Elias's problem? You could use that short end of the paragraph to find your answer. And then the last one, how are the settings in text one and two the same? What is the setting again? Hopefully you said it's where the story takes place. It's where the story happens. So how are the settings the same? How is it they're happening in the same place? All right, see if you can finish the rest of this on your own. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the next page. So um, we're looking at conjunctions still. Uh, in the video for yesterday, I did put some links to some videos about conjunctions. One of them is a song and one of them um, isn't a song. I don't, I don't think it was a song. No, the other one just kind of goes over some examples of conjunctions. So we have the def definition here. A conjunction connects words, phrases, and clauses. For example, in the above sentence, the word and is the conjunction. You can also remember um, conjunctions by thinking of the word fanboys. So for and nor, but, or, yet, and so. Those are all of the conjunctions. And I think there were a couple videos about that too. So I'll see if I can find a good one and I'll put a link in the, um, in the video for today as well, in case you want to review what a conjunction is. Cause if you're trying to do this worksheet here and you're like, oh, I don't know what a conjunction is. Um, it's not going to be very helpful, right? You could use the elimination strategy that we talked about yesterday, where you cross off the nouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs that you know. But it's still, if you're not sure about the conjunctions, make sure you watch the, the YouTube, click on the links. I can't, unfortunately, um, add those YouTube videos to the playlist. It doesn't let me add children's videos. It's like a rule of YouTube that you can't add them to a playlist for some reason. So um, that's why you'll have to just click the links. But take a look at them if you're still not sure what a conjunction is. All right, number one. The baseball player was hit by a pitch, yet he stayed in the game. Remember that word, fanboys? The word yet was in that word, meaning it's a conjunction. It's just a way to memorize um, lots of different words by using some kind of abbreviation or anagram. All right, we'll do one more together. Maria and Charlotte are best friends, but they do argue from time to time. All right. Remember, this says circle all the conjunctions in each sentence below. So which word or words would I circle in number two? Hopefully you remember and. And then we also have in the word fanboys, um, for and nor, but, or, yet, and so. The word but 
But remember, if we wanted to do elimination, we know Maria and Charlotte are proper nouns. We know R is the verb. Best friend would be adjective and noun. We would cross those out. They, we're going to cross out the subject, do argue. We have an auxiliary verb and a verb. From, maybe we wouldn't know what from is. It's a preposition. And then time to time. We know to, um, it goes with the verb sometimes and it's a preposition. Time is a noun. So maybe we would have these three left over that we might not be sure about. Um, and we could get confused. We might think fanboy is from, but it wouldn't be that one. But a lot of times just use what you know. Sometimes we get stuck on things because we think, well, I don't know anything about this. But sometimes you know things about other subjects that can help you with this, like eliminating the, the nouns and adjectives and things that we know. We, it has nothing to do with conjunctions, but it still helped us to figure out the answer, right? Okay, so number three, four, and five, go ahead and do on your own. We have Grant watched the fishing show, then switched to cartoons. Holly spent an hour on the phone since she finished all her homework. Peter and Dennis stayed up until midnight so they could welcome Uncle Ray. And then you will write your own sentence and circle all the conjunctions and draw a little picture based upon your sentence. All right, so try your best to figure this out and then we'll take a look at the next. We're gonna be looking at suffixes. So specifically, um, different suffixes, they have meanings that come with them. And so when you add the suffix to a word, you're also adding the meaning that comes with it. So let's take a look at the top spelling rules for suffixes. A suffix is a word part that's added to the end of a root or base word. It changes the meaning of the word. There are spelling rules to follow when adding the suffixes less, full, y, or ly. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, we have the suffixes here, and then we have the meaning. Here's a table that we're using. Remember, we use tables in math a lot, but they also use tables just to organize any kind of information. So less means without, full means full of, Y ending means characterized by or like, and then LY ending means characteristic of. So not too different here. Let's take a look at the spelling rules. If the word ends in a consonant and Y, change it to I before adding the suffix. This is kind of similar to when we create a plural in something ending in a Y. Remember we did a worksheet on this not that long ago. You change that to I and add ES. In this case, we're changing the Y to an I and then adding whichever one of these suffixes we need. Number two, keep the E before less, full, and Li. Drop the E before Y. So here's an example. For use, we change it to useless. Notice, there's an E here and we kept the E just like this rule tells us to do. But when we're adding a Y, it says drop the E. So here we had an E, and here notice there's no E, we dropped it, okay? So when you're looking at the words, the best thing to do is first you could use your intuition. So you could just think, okay, I know how to spell this word, I'm gonna spell it like this. Then come up here to the rules and see if you're following the rules. If you're following the rules, you're probably correct, but if you're not following the rules, then I would um, go ahead and follow the rules and see how you're supposed to spell the word. So we have four different things that we're doing here. Let's take a look. Part one, add the suffix less to each word. Write the new word on the line. And just FYI, you're gonna do this for all of these parts, the suffix will just change. So it's kind of cool that they separate them for you so you can practice and you really only have to look at one rule for each box. So we're gonna add less. Let's just review any rules here. The only rule we have for adding less is dropping the E before a Y. So that's what we need to pay attention to. So I have the word power. Do I have an E at the end? No, right? So, oh, I, I just said the wrong thing too. Dropping the E before a Y. We're not dropping the E before a Y. We're paying attention to this one. Keeping the E before less. Okay, sorry guys. It's still early. Okay, so keeping our E. So we're, we actually don't have to do anything then. We're just going to take this and attach it to the end of all these words. So this should be the easiest box. So um, if I'm going to do power and I need to add less to it, what do I do? How do I put these 
to this base word and the suffix together to make a new word. Just simply write them all together, right? I'm gonna write out power and write out less, no space. That's it, the word is powerless. How about for homeless? How would I figure this one out? I'm just gonna write out home. And remember, the only rule I have here is keeping that E before adding less. So I leave the E and I add less. That's all I'm gonna do. So see if you can finish doing this one. This is probably the easiest one. Let's take a look at the next one. Add the suffix full to each word, write the new word on the line. So same thing, just pay attention to the suffix that you're adding. So for full, I'm just using that same rule. I'm gonna keep the E before I add full, okay? So if I have the word help and I need to make the word into helpful, what do I do? Just add full, perfect. That's it. How about the word beauty? And I want to change it to beautiful. This ends in a Y. Take a look up here. If the word ends in a consonant and Y, change it to I before adding the suffix. So notice, is T a consonant? It is. So we have consonant plus Y, just like it says up here for rule one. So that means I have to change that consonant, or not the consonant, sorry, change the Y to an I. So I'm gonna start writing it out, B-A-U-T. T is my consonant, I'm not gonna write an I. A Y, <laughs> I am gonna write an I. I'm not gonna write a Y, I'm gonna change it to an I, and then I'm gonna write full, beautiful. See if you can figure out the rest. How would I spell thoughtful, forgetful, forceful, and successful? Sorry, for this one, you're writing endless, careless, hopeless, and tasteless. For part three here, add the Y suffix to each word. Write the new word on the line. So you're just adding a Y. And then let's take a look at our first one. We have cream. And then the only rule we're looking at is drop the E before Y. Do we have an E that we need to drop in cream? No, right? There is an E in cream, but it's not here before the Y. So all we're gonna do to write creamy is add our Y to the end, that's it. How about if I have the word filth? How can I make the word filthy? Just add the Y to the end, right? So that's it. Pay attention here for noise, for juice, and for scare. You need to pay attention to this rule, dropping the E before you add the Y. Just like for Lay's, you dropped the E and you added the Y and had no E in it. So see if you can do the rest. You need to write noisy, juicy, touchy, sorry, and scary here. Last box, all you're gonna do is add the suffix L-Y to each word and write the new word on the line. So for L-Y, it just says keep the E before L-Y. Okay, and then, well, that's the only one we need to look at because none of these end in a Y, so we don't need to take a look at the other rule. So for the word friend, if I wanted to add L-Y, which says Lee to the end, um, what do I do? If you said just add them together, don't change anything, you're absolutely right. So I have friendly. Notice, if you know how to pronounce these suffixes, it helps you to read a lot of different words because you know that the suffix is pronounced the same way. Lee, E, full, less. So you already know how to read a part of the word just by knowing the suffix. All right, number 20, how can I write out quickly? Hopefully you said, write down quick, write down L-Y, that's it. See if you can write slowly, loudly, quietly, and commonly. Remember, if you're not sure about how to spell something, go back up to the rules. In this way, um, it's spelling is almost like math. It's almost like you have a number sentence and you have a rule or an operation that you're trying to use in order to figure out how to create these new words. So if you're able to use this equation, this number sentence, it makes it really easy. And foreign languages can be that way too when you're learning a new language. Sometimes you can learn some kind of like sentence equations that can help you to create um, new sentences. All right. I'm going to make a part two of the video here because it's getting kind of long. So I'll see you in the next video.